Hi, boys and girls. I miss you so much. I know you're probably tired of me saying that, but every day it's the truth. So I'm in my daughter Julia's bedroom. It's the quietest place right now in the house. Um, I'm going to read a story to you today. I have missed doing that so much. And I'm going to then attach um, some papers that you can use. It is Wednesday, and I am in the process, as I told your moms and dads, of getting you more books and your math books. But we're waiting to see how safe that is for me to get to school. So um, I want you to listen to the story of me reading this to you one time. And then I want you to go back and you can pause where you want. Um, you can make predictions, um, anything like that. Matter of fact, uh, we should probably start with a um, sneak peek like we used to in school. And I wanted to tell you I chose a book from our very favorite author, Patricia Polacco, because I love her and it always makes me think of you guys when I read her. Plus, this story is about making memories, and I can guarantee you, your parents would agree, that this is a memory we will all have for a very long time, something that we never thought would be possible. But I know for me, every day I try to think of a positive thing to do that day, um, that's why mostly I sent you those cards because I wanted you to know as always I'm thinking of you and some of you I've called your moms and dads if they had a question um, and I want you to know that you can email me anytime you want if you're missing me or you want to think of let me know you're thinking of me so um, I am not good at technology I'm trying to be better but um, the first thing I want to let you do is see the story. It is called The Keeping Quilt by Patricia Polacco. And you know that whenever we see hold on one sec, these on a book, we know it's a very special book. It's written or it's won some kind of reward. So as I said, we will never forget this time in our lives. Um, and this story is about a way people do think about or remember times in their lives. And the first thing I guess I would ask you is, what do you think would be a quilt? Uh, or rather, let me repeat that, um, restate that. What? Uh, how do you think a quilt would help you remember things? And look at the title, The Keeping Quilt. How would that help you um, or what do you think that title would mean? If you want to go ahead and pause now and tell yourself or someone around you what you think the sneak peek would do. This book does not have anything on the back to help us. But if you look at Patricia's pictures, as we know, that is her, the little girl. She always makes these stories about real things that happen to her. And if you look at the characters' faces... I also want you to kind of notice something. Look at the illustration here, and then look at the illustration here. I want you to think about the way um, the front cover is different and like the back. So I'm going to continue to read. Um, every now and then I might ask you to stop and pause and make a prediction. But as always, friends, you know when you're reading, you stop and jot where you think you want to make a think mark. Um, is something surprising you? Are you wondering about something? Did you like something? Did something stand out? So please do that. I hope you've been doing that. And I know that you probably have run out of reading materials. And I, I'm so sorry for that. Um, I know that I was talking to one of our moms yesterday, and her daughter is reading books on something called Epic. Um, I don't know much about that, but um, she said that she's been reading stories from that. Hopefully you know, like you used to see me do, anytime I didn't have a book in our library, I would literally YouTube it, and every single time that book was there. So I know those books are being read to you, and that's okay. You can always mute um, the narrator, and if the text is visible, you can read the text for yourself if you have run out of things to read for yourself. So, um, 
I'm so excited to read to you guys, even though you're really not here. I'm picturing all of you sitting in the circle around me. So here we go. This is called The Keeping Quilt um, by Patricia Polacco. And think about that purpose. Why would somebody um, keep memories? How would somebody keep memories? Think about ways your parents and you keep memories. Think about, for example, when both Lily and Lorelai brought in um, autograph books from their trip to Disney and their scrapbooks and photo albums. That's a really great way we keep memories. Um, so let's see how they would keep a memory with something called the keeping quilt, okay? I think you will recognize that and I want you to think about that. What do you think is going on here? And if you look really carefully like a detective, you're going to notice something about this illustration that was similar to the one on the front cover. Look really carefully. Stop and look if you have to. When my great-grandma Anna came to America, I'll read and then I'll show you the picture. She wore the same thick overcoat and big boots she had worn for farm work, but her family weren't dirt farmers anymore. In New York City, her father's work was hauling things on a wagon, and the rest of the family made artificial flowers all day. Everyone was in a hurry, and it was so crowded, not like back home in Russia. But all the same, it was their home, and most of their neighbors were just like them. All right, detectives, you're going to see something on this picture that's going to be different than everything else, so look carefully. Ask yourself why. Why is something different so far in all of these pictures? Look at the characters' faces. I would pause here so you can really look. And you know what? I'm thinking, I'm wondering if you can start to make a connection to a couple of books we read together where somebody has left their home. In this case, they were from Russia and they went to America. Remember we read about a couple of characters who left their homes to go to America? I'm wondering why they had to do that. When Anna went to school, English sounded to her like pebbles dropping into a shallow water. Shh, shh, shh. In six months, she was speaking English. Her parents almost never learned, so she spoke English for them, too. The only things she had left of back home Russia were her dress and the babushka she liked to throw up into the air when she was dancing. I want you to figure out what a babushka must be. And I hope you guys made a connection to other characters we've read who didn't know how to speak English and then learned it. Look and see what's different here. Look at her face and look at the girls around her. What do you suppose might be happening here? And what do you think a babushka is? It said she was throwing it around. What do you think would be a good synonym for that? And her dress was getting too small, and her mother had sewn her a new one. She took her old dress and babushka. Then from a basket of old clothes, she took Uncle Vladimir's shirt, Aunt Havala's nightdress, and an apron of Aunt Natasha's. We will make a quilt to help us always remember home, Anna's mother said. It will be like having the family in back home Russia dance around us at night. So I'm thinking they're starting to tell us what that quilt's all about. You see her dress? You see her babushka? I want you to notice something, friends. The illustrator did something on purpose. Do you see how some of the illustration is much lighter? It almost looks ghost-like. Why do you think she did that? This was the page where they were talking about remembering everybody back home. 
Hmm, think about that. And so it was. Anna's mother invited all the neighborhood ladies. They cut out animals and flowers from the scraps of clothing. Anna kept the needles threaded and handed them to the ladies as they needed them. The border of the quilt was made of Anna's babushka. Look. Remember what she was throwing in the air? What do you notice about this picture that's kind of been on the other pictures as well. On Friday nights, Anna's mother would say the prayers that started the Sabbath. The family ate chala, sorry if I'm mispronouncing that, and chicken soup. The quilt was the tablecloth. Anna grew up and fell in love with great grandpa Sasha. To show he wanted to be her husband, he gave Anna a gold coin, a dried flower, and a piece of rock salt, all tied into a linen handkerchief. Now I want you to stop here and I want you to think about this. These are the three things he gave her, and they're symbols. They stand for something. So I'm going to tell you those three things again and think about what they would represent. A gold coin, a dried flower, and a piece of rock salt. Freeze here and write down or think in your head or tell somebody what those might symbolize for someone who wants to marry someone else. I wonder if this is what you said. The gold was for wealth, the flower for love, and the salt so their lives would have flavor. She accepted the hanky. They were engaged. How's that different than what we do in America? When your daddy asked your mom to marry him, did he give her a gold coin, a salt, and a flower? I'm not sure. Okay, here's when she was little and they would have their dinner on Sabbath. It was a um, tablecloth. And here, this is when her husband asked her to marry him, and it's a blanket. I wonder what else they're going to use it for. Under the wedding hoopa, Anna and Sasha promised each other love and understanding. After the wedding, the men and women celebrated separately. Hmm. Is that like what we do in America? If you've ever been to a wedding, I know one of our friends was a flower girl. I wonder if that's what you did. Did the men and the women celebrate separately? Are you noticing that there's a lot of things in this book we could do an activity with things that are the same and things that are different? I'm definitely noticing that. Okay, and I'm sorry again if I mispronounce this, but when people in this religion get married, they stand under something called what I thought was a hoopa, and they get married. Now watch. These are the people, and then it looks like they're showing the women back here celebrating by themselves, and the men celebrating by themselves. When my grandma Carly was born, Anna wrapped her daughter in the quilt to welcome her warmly into the world. Carly, listen to this, was given a gift of, take a guess, what do you think they gave the baby? Stop and take a guess. Well, this is what they gave her, a gift of gold, flour, salt, and bread. Why do you think they gave her gold, salt, flour? I kind of have an idea from before, but now bread. Why do you think bread? What would that stand for? If it says gold, so she would never know poverty. If you're not sure what that word means, I want you to look that up. Poverty. A flower, so she would always know love. Salt, so her life would always have flavor, and bread, so that she would never know hunger. 
Carly learned to keep the Sabbath and to cook and clean and do washing. Married you'll be someday, Anna told Carly. And again, that's what they wrapped the baby in. And again, the quilt became a wedding hoopa. This time for baby, who's now grown up Carly's wedding, to Grandpa George. Men and women celebrated together, but they still did not dance together. And Carly's wedding bouquet was, I bet you can guess, a gold coin, ah, bread, and salt, no flour. Carly and George moved to a farm in Michigan, and great-grandma Anna came to live with them. The quilt once again wrapped a new little girl. I married Anna. Here's another wedding, but this is Carly grown up, and this is Carly's baby. They called her Mary Ellen. Mary Ellen called Anna Lady Grandma. She had grown very old and was sick a lot of the time. The quilt kept her legs warm. On Anna's 98th birthday, the cake was a coolant. I don't know if that's how you say it. A rich cake with raisins and candied fruit in it. Friends, this is the little girl we first met in the very beginning of the book. Now she's 98. And look at what it's being used for. The birthday cake. Table cover. When great-grandma Anna died, prayers were said to lift her soul to heaven. My mother, Mary Ellen, was now grown up. My, mo my mother, Mary Ellen? Who do you think Mary Ellen must be if it says my? Oh, and here's grandma Anna. When... Mary Ellen left home. She took the quilt with her. When she became a bride, the quilt became her hoopah. For the first time, friends who were not Jews came to the wedding. Do you know that? To the way things are different. Remember when we first heard men and women did not celebrate together and they definitely didn't dance. And remember what happened at the second wedding? Go back and, and read. <laughs> Watch what we said happened at the second wedding about men and women. And now at this third wedding, people who weren't even Jewish could come. My mother wore a suit, but in her bouquet were gold, bread, and salt. Can you find, I'm not going to tell you where, can you find what happened to that blanket on this page? On this page, it's again that hoopa, if I'm saying it right. The quilt welcomed me, Patricia, into the world. And it was the tablecloth from my first birthday party. There's our author and illustrator, Mary Ellen. So Mary Ellen must have been her, I'm not telling you. At night, I would trace my fingers around the edges of each animal on the quilt before I went to sleep. I told my mother stories about the animals on the quilt. She told me whose sleeve had made the horse, whose apron had made the chicken, whose dress had made the flowers, and whose babushka went around the edge of the quilt. Do you remember whose that was? The quilt was a pretend cape when I was in the bullring, or sometimes a tent in the steaming Amazon jungle. Remember, friends, Patricia is our character. Mr. Falker how, helped learn how to read. Remember, Patricia didn't know how to read. I'm wondering if that's why she used her imagination so much, because she didn't have books that could help her. At my wedding to Enzo Mario, men and women danced together. In my bouquet were gold, bread, and salt, and a sprinkle of wine, so I would always know laughter. I want you to look really carefully at this picture. What do you notice is going on at this wedding that we didn't see in the others? Look really carefully. Yeah. 
weird character. What kinds of people were there? And what were they all doing? Twenty years ago, I held Tracy Denise in the quilt for the first time. Someday, she too will leave home, and she will take the quilt with her. That's our author, illustrator, Patricia, and that's her daughter. All right, so I want you to think about our initial question, our purpose for reading that story, okay? How do we remember memories? In what ways do we keep them, right? What was the keeping quilt's purpose? And why do people keep memories? So I want you to think about that. Um, I'm going to send an attachment of a paper you can do, like a graphic organizer, um, and you can fill it in. And I hope this wasn't too long. I really felt like you were listening, and I loved it. And um, I will be talking to you guys soon in some form. We'll plan to Zoom again. And like I said, if you want to email me, obviously mommy and daddy know my email, feel free to do that. And just know that I am always, always thinking of you guys.